All right, everybody. We got our special guest back. Uh, but before that, let me do the intro. Welcome to News Across the Galaxy, where we talk all things LA Galaxy. This is the Midwick Priva Show. Oh, my God. The Midwick Priva Show. Ay, well, la gran puta. The Midwick Preview Show. Um, of course, next to me, per usual, is my co-host, Edgar Zuniga. And we brought back special guests all the way from Argentina. Or, <laughs> or Kansas, <laughs> or, or Kansas, Kansas. Uh, Kevincho, how are you, sir? I am good. Glad to be back. Feels like we were literally, feels like we just talked. So it's just kind of strange. So here we are. Season started. Game, first game between us. Excited. Already played one LA team. Got to do the other one again. I, I'm I'm ready. I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go, Edgar. You have a very interesting out for there, sir. Can you please explain to everybody well, what's going on? Can see, I'm already here. I'm actually in Kansas, just uh, just maybe 20 minutes away from Kansas City itself. I'm here in here at the at the fog, uh, at, and um, I I'm pumped up. Because it's not just uh, LA Galaxy versus Kansas City this weekend. March Madness begins today. And there's one thing Kevin and I share in common is a love for the Kansas Jayhawks. And man, we're ready to suffer. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Hey, this look, by the time this comes out, whenever this comes out, we are probably, I don't know. Well, if this comes out next week, we might still be in the tournament. Hopefully we don't lose tonight. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's It's Kansas. Look, Kansas basketball, especially this year, I'm going to say it. Pretty, re- pretty relevant in my sporting uh, viewership the last several <laughs> years. It has been a very horrific ride, but we're here. Uh, just like last season, sporting made the playoffs. I feel like that's like Kansas just got here, and now we're about to see them. I don't know. Maybe Cook. We'll see. Uh... Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm here infiltrating. Yes. Get a little inside info. On this uh, weekend's match between Sporting Kansas City and the LA Galaxy, um, right? Let's get it started, man. Yeah, yeah. Before before we even get into the match, uh, Kevincho, what's been going on uh, since the last time we talked to you? Uh, I know we had <sighs> a very long two hour conversation. Uh, it was a lot yeah. of rambling, but a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, what's been going on since then? You know, since then it's just like planning out the season for this year. Also made up my mind of like rotating NWSL streams and MLS streams, which I've only done one round. It's only been like the first week of NWSL. So like right now we're just starting to kick off the, the craziness plus also preparing for Copa America this summer and then TST stuff that I'm going to be involved in. So I don't know right now I'm like chilling. It's not too bad. Like I got like (laughs) random things every other day, but uh, it's definitely going to pick up later. (laughs) Yeah, uh, Edgar, last time we talked to Kevincho, what have you been up to? I know we did a show last week, but you had some uh, <laughs> stuff going on with your kneecaps there, sir. Yeah, I had knee surgery to repair <laughs> some hey. damage, I guess. I mean, I had knee surgery just 50 months ago to repair cartilage damage, and then turns out I had my, an errant piece of bone floating around my knee, and it was very <laughs> painful, and... Ew. I I, uh, I dealt with that as best as I could for six weeks until the surgery finally came, and I just had my stitches out today, so I'm a new man and uh, hey. ready to get back into the gym and <laughs> yeah, you know, and mess the other one up and, and maybe uh, play for LA this weekend. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do need a center back. More <laughs> more on that uh, later on. Oh God, yes, <laughs> yeah. So before we even uh, hit record, um, I asked Vincho about this new. U22 initiative rule. Uh, we touched on this, uh, Edgar and I, with Matt Baker from Flyover Footy. We also talked about it a bit on our live episode this Sunday. Uh, Kevin, what do you think uh, of this new rule that, in my eyes, uh, is making the league better? Yeah, I think it's a good direction. I think I I know that 
like when it was announced, uh, we had mixed reviews uh, just from just going off of looking at Twitter, uh, which probably isn't the best thing you should do, especially when it <laughs> comes to MLS news. But uh, I just was curious on just the negative sides. For me, it just seems like it makes sense to me. And it, especially like, with the messy conversation or enter Miami, there's always been this conversation where like, well, we need to open things up. We need to expand. We need to have, you know, more opportunities with our DPs. We need to have more of a push for our younger players, uh, not just, you know, older players or whatever. In my sense, I think it's a great thing. Plus w- involving homegrowns and stuff like that. The only thing I'm kind of confused about is like how it works with the super draft. I I really, I haven't even really got into it. I guess you, you guys might have more knowledge on that, but all in all, I think it's the the right direction for sure. I think one of the things that it's important to me is to, is to simplify some of the rules uh, as far as player acquisition. Because when you start to get into the nitty gritty with Gam and Tam and all the other uh-huh. stuff that's going around, uh, even the most dedicated MLS fans will get confused. And then if you start to mention this to uh, casual fans, they're, they're just going to tune it out and be like, I don't know, I don't get it. Yeah. And then if people ask, oh, why uh, can't we acquire a certain player? Why is our roster look the, the way it does? Well, because of these secretive little languages <laughs> right. that we have in the MLS rules for player acquisition. Uh, another funny thing, if we're going to be talking about um, player acquisition, is uh, uh, player discovery rights, right? Uh, uh, and then we just I just heard over the week uh, that... Uh, uh, the LAFC has discovery rights on um, Giroud, right? Right. And so right. I'm like, what? What is this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, Don Garber's giving you a call. Oh, my God. <laughs> right. Yeah. That He's was a talking oh, no. point. Like last year, or was it last year? <laughs> the year right before uh, Ronaldo signed for uh, to Saudi Arabia, like that was the talk. Like sporting has Ronaldo discovery rights. Like no one knows who the <laughs> frick Ronaldo is. You know what I mean? Like it is so goofy. I think that is a good point of just – making a little bit more clear. I mean, at the end of the day, I think a lot of the talking points, which is kind of why I like to follow Tom Bogert or guys that just know what they're talking about when it comes to signings and a lot of like the casuals, I'll even throw myself in there. Like we all kind of look back and go like, how are some teams popping off when it comes to signings? Not just like their location. Like, of course you want to live in LA or New York or wherever, or Miami, but also like, how are they getting these players while other clubs seem to be struggling? And it's funny. Cause like Tom Bogert or whoever will make a post and say, look, these teams have not been seen to be breaking any rules or doing anything shady, even though it feels like, like, how is this club signing their ninth Argentinian in like two days? Like what the <laughs> hell? Um, but, but at the same time, it's like, you look at the guys that are in this, 24 seven who actually understand the terminology they're like no it's they're doing everything by the book it's just like lack of knowledge i feel like and i'm there too so it's kind of cool that we're kind of going in a direction where we can kind of dissolve some things hopefully but especially this upcoming like this off season i i would hope to see a lot more changes but we said that last year so you never know yeah well good thing this is a pod where we talk all feelings and no facts baby let's (laughs) go (laughs) exactly and so any new things around Kansas? I know we had a uh, very intense conversation about the scumbag that was surrounded with Whoa, Sporting Kansas. Man. What has yeah. happened since then, Kevin? You know, I was going to say it's feeling awfully like last season, the start of this season, just before we played uh, San Jose. But like in Sporting World, it's been, and I've been talking to everyone, like super avid fans, ex-players, uh, uh, one current player, and uh, some casuals, just like the overall vibes with the team. And it does feel like things are so bland. It just feels like we're just going through another season, same old, same old everything, same lineup, same everything. And we before the San Jose game, we were we had a couple draws and we're like, hey, are we about to go 10 weeks again without winning? Like it had that vibe again. And San Jose is a team that is not doing well and uh, not looking good. So you're like, okay, we should dominate. And we started the game losing. And then I'm like, you've got to be joking. It's it's last season all over again. Uh, but we turned it around. We flipped it around and won. I'm not going to be the guy that go like, yeah, guys, we're looking pretty good now that we beat San Jose, who've been looking like <laughs> garbage. Um, but I'm also just happy that, look, we it's it's compared to last year, it is an improvement that we have more points, you know, four weeks in than we did like 
11 weeks. So uh, that's where I'm at right now with sporting. Sounds exhausting and not yeah. something to look forward to week in and week out, which is unfortunate no. because, I mean, to start off undefeated is is not bad, yeah. especially even in, from, from looking at it from our side. Um, this is better than what most of us expected. And so... This weekend, the teams are going to get to battle um, or try to defend their undefeated streak. But before we go there, uh, there was a new kit that was unveiled for uh, Kansas City. And I know uh, Edgar has the kit tournament going in going on in Twitter slash X. Uh, make sure to follow Edgar at Edgar Nags to keep up with the tournament. Kevin, what did you think about your guys' new uh, new kits? I, I loved it. I know like from a if you know nothing about sporting or know nothing about their previous kits or anything, it could just be like, all right, they threw a, a little pattern, like cool. But uh it is a pattern that we've had multiple different times and like throughout those eras, like we had some good seasons, or we just like looked really good, even if we didn't win anything. And last year we all kind of went on a little panic because they went for this hoop design again and pretty much told the fans like, hey. This is what we want. We want our identity to be hoops, which is interesting because there's other teams that have hoops, but whatever. Uh, but they they went back to this Argyle look for our Awaken, and I loved it. Uh, the dark blue, the touch of like light blue is nice. Huge fan. So it's more like maybe it's not the prettiest kid out of all the kids, but it's just kind of like this is what the fans wanted. So I'm happy they they can kind of went back with that. Yeah, I really liked it, to be honest. I don't know if you saw my rankings. I ranked it number seven overall. Yeah. And I said that uh, it it didn't it didn't take much for it to look very classy and uh, go down as one of the better kits in, in the MLS right now. Yeah. Uh, I just feel that that, Ar- that Argyle pattern, uh, Kansas City owns it now. It's, right. It's part of their identity. And, yes, they haven't used it in a while, but when it does pop up, it's undoubtedly sporting Kansas City, yeah. Which is interesting. I mentioned also that this uh, this particular franchise has had some of the most interesting and colorful kits throughout their history, from the yeah. rainbow kids to the you know kind of very monochromatic uh, Wizards eras, which would still look nice. It's just they're monochromatic, yeah. And now with, you know at Sporting Kansas City, they, and um, they've had a lot of really nice kids. So I was like, they, you know, they they keep it nice. It's kind of like Duke University. You know, you know what Duke's gonna look like. Right, you know, and you're like, how how are you gonna make a blue and white you look different every year? But they do, and it still looks good. Right, so it's kind of like that. Yeah, I and um, I really liked it high, <laughs> and then he went up against the 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 Lions from Orlando with their <laughs> legacy kit. Yeah, and whoo, <laughs> those Orlando fans really like that that Orlando <laughs> kit, man. The badge is nice. I I think it's like the nicest badge in MLS. Like if they keep using it, it's just it's a cool throwback to, like there are kits that are or at least badges that are clean and simple, but it, it is nice. So I, it's a good team to lose to, I think in, in my opinion, even though <laughs> the color is weird, but look, we, the only thing that sporting fans were upset about was like when sporting said hoops is our identity. Obviously we have a team close to us in Dallas. That is, that is like their identity hoops. Dallas has always had these hoops look. And so it just felt like a weird thing. So like, again, it was more like, Thank God we're back. Hopefully we slowly get away from hoops, even though I don't think so. Uh, but you didn't mention it. We, I mean, Sporting Kansas City, like I think you guys are getting a retro kits or throwback kits. And uh, if we, I'm trying to see some rainbow, you know, that's what I'm I'm looking for. I'm, I'm buying that easy. So those yes. classic whiz days, of course. I yes. <laughs> yes. love that. Well, by the way, uh, it's just interesting. You mentioned uh, Dallas and the hoop things. I actually, uh, when I was doing the research on these kits, um, it turns out that FCD is actually not just going away from hoops, they're running as fast as they can away from hoops because they haven't had hoops in their kits since, I think, 2015 or something. Yeah, yeah. And so everything that they put out nowadays is so different from hoops. And like now yeah. they have this weird tonal shift from red to blue yeah. and it has purple in it. And I was like, uh, wow, you know, another Texas-based team that has purple in it because uh, Houston has purple and uh, yeah. Houston has purple. I mean, uh, sorry, Houston has purple and Dallas has purple. And I think, um, well, no, Austin doesn't. They, they yeah, Austin would be that. Yeah. 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 But, but yeah, a lot of wonderful kids. I know you were talking about them too. Uh, just a really good batch of uniforms. 
uh, there were some that were kind of ugly, you know, like yeah. I thought that the, the, the Toronto one was kind of hideous. It's just boring. For, for sure. But then I really like the Minnesota kit a lot. And uh, unfortunately, right now they're, they're going up against LAFC and they're, they're in the polls and they're, they're losing by a... What? Yeah. The LAFC but fans are right, going in there. Right? Yeah, they go crazy. It's like there's no way <laughs> you're going to... It's just fan bases now just fighting because come on. Are you kidding me? That that LAFC kit is horrific. I'm sorry. <laughs> that shit sucks. Like, come on. Okay, whatever. It's so, well, really hard to tell people, please get in there and just vote impartial as much as you can. Right. Man. I mean, it's not even like, <laughs> oh, LAFC takes the crowd. It's like, okay, listen, we're talking about the design here. Universe versus pinstripes. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just to put things into perspective before you change subject. Um um, we mentioned Matt Baker from Flyover Footy, right? And I, uh, I asked him to give me like a little review on the kit. And so, uh, when I put out the the St. Louis kit, I told him I rank it number twenty one. I'm sorry, it's just you know that's the best I can give a, something that looks as white as possible, but it has like a gradient pattern or something right. on it. And I was like, and this, I was like, it looks nice. You know, it's better, it's better than the one you guys had last year. And um, he was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> and then uh, come this tournament, right? He's uh-huh. like, haha, this is our chance. He's like, you don't understand. St. Louis people love to vote. We uh-huh. love polls. And they had, just in the first round, 597 votes in favor of their kit. What? They beat, they, they beat out New England Revolution, but I think it was like 91.3% yeah. of the vote or something. Listen. <laughs> like, dear God, these guys are going to run the whole table. This is the, new, this is the new team vibes, guys. We've all seen it. When the new teams come in, the fan bases are a little overexcited. Uh, but give them time to calm down a little bit after they get a couple seasons of getting, you know, beat up and and suffering, you know, not missing playoffs. They'll be a little less uh, antsy, but I get it. All right. <laughs> it does look super average, St. Louis. Come on, be real. Yeah. But all right. <laughs> Before we do move on, uh, do you have a uh, favorite kit this season, Kevin? Oh, God. You know, I I don't think this is a popular choice here, but only I only like it because of like, the history but maybe people will say this is wild i like seattle's kit because when i do look at it i get like we even pretend like i don't know anything about seattle i'm like why does this remind me of like the 70s this like green the white the baby blue looking into it is so nice the details with the freaking uh uh what's it called the orca or whatever it was so cool like all of that coming together is nice i think the badge only throws it off for me that's i wish they did something Maybe offset colors because it kind of, you know, you get lost in the the stripes. But I love that kit. I thought it was totally different. And I can tell why people are like 50-50. Either you love it or you hate it. But yeah. I think I like that. They went bold. Yeah, I'm actually a you big fan I, of that one. Yeah. Go ahead, Edgar. You know what I had to say about it? Mm. <laughs> I actually ranked it like 15 overall. And I okay. said, everybody's talking about like, oh, this is because I said, everybody's going to have this in their top five list. Because yeah. they, they think, they think they haven't seen anything <laughs> like this in a while. But if you go back, the Tampa Bay Mutiny in '98 had the same exact kit, only the colors were reversed. Okay. And I was yeah. like, and then and then if you go read in the description that they said uh, in a, about their kit, they said that they're using their new color, which is called muted green or something. Huh. They're not using the rave green anymore; it's like a muted green. Yeah. And yeah. then they're using their old colors from the '70s. I mean, they have the orca, which is cool. Um, yeah. But if you go back and look at the 1998 Tampa Bay Mutiny home kit, it looks almost the same. Wow, I have to look it up. I've, I have no so idea. So that's why I was like, eh, all right. I was like, it's, you know, it's cool. I know, I understand what people are going to be, you know, be like, it's wonderful. But yeah. I thought the Minnesota kit was far and above beyond yeah. anything. Yeah. Get a girl, right. You're sounding That's... crazy because I love that Seattle kid. Anyway, <laughs> if you guys want to know more about uh, Edgar's rankings and his beautiful um, report on the jerseys, go to nagtv.com. You'll see all the kits there and with uh, a little something from Edgar. All right, let's move on. Uh, Kansas City and the LA Galaxy play on Saturday, March 23rd at 5.30 p.m. at Children's Mercy Park. Both teams coming in undefeated. And trying to yeah. keep that going. Kevin, mm. you guys have three ties, <laughs> one yes. win. Um, what could be better? And has there been a game where you, you might have been like, oh, man, we could have lost that one? Oh, yeah. Pfft. All three of those ties. Um, 
let me see listen like the philly game uh we played philly and it ended up uh one one and even though like for a while we actually started winning that game but they just had so many chances and and at the very end they they drew it up and and that's when i was like oh god it it has the same feeling that we had last season that we had so many games that we were leading and then we fell at the very end just a stupid mistake uh costed us or or just like completely murdered us like we had an austin game that we were winning and then they flipped it on us completely and it's just like a mental thing it's what it feels like at least and everybody that i've talked to about you know sporting the last couple of years have always said like like dude we have quality players but there's something that like does not click when it's like time to all right keep possession hold the ball maybe not risk anything like don't risk anything when you have five minutes left you're up one nil just be chill and we just don't have that i don't know what it is go say it's a coaching thing i don't know i don't want to get into it but <laughs> uh i don't know it just it just feels bad and, and going off of what you guys i mean you guys came off of a st louis game that was crazy uh and st louis is a good team and they played so well and i thought you guys played really good and the game that you guys played uh was it miami you guys played miami right the first game the first yeah. game that game uh was probably not the score you wanted, but that game was really, really good. Like I felt like from a first game, all right, hit the ground running. It was, you guys look good for me. Uh, so that's making me nervous coming into this game going like, all right, we, I feel like we have a mental issue. We seem very boring on the field. Thank God we're at home. At least we have that. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Every game feels like, feels like, I don't know if I should trust it. LA FC, have not started that hot either. So we drew against them. And last season, I would have been like, oh my God, we drew against LAFC. We haven't been looking good. But this season, I don't, I'm not really feeling that. Um, and I, we just, or I just found out right before uh, getting on that Johnny Russell looks like he's out this game. Ooh. Uh, so wow. that's. It like, continues then. Yeah. We've had yeah. This, this string where like uh, the teams are playing against are missing some like key players, some key player, which, okay. I'm going to say this and this might, you know, make people think, uh, I don't know, like I'm on something today, but it's been so much this, like the starting lineup has been the same that I am interested to see what we would look out like without Johnny for the first 80 minutes, at least or something, just because it's been the same. Uh, but he does bring something different. Like if it's an intense game and just like, you need a Johnny out there because he's a commander. He's in a ref's face. He's in a defender's face or whatever. But uh, let's say it's not that intense. It's more relaxed. I, I need someone that kind of could create a little bit more. But I don't know. We'll see. It's kind of right now he's under questionable. I don't think he's playing. So that'll bring another thing for me. I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit nervous for this game. You mentioned that Kansas City has been able to put out a consistent lineup. Um, yeah, which in most ca most cases, when you want to establish some type of rhythm with the team, that you know that's a plus. Um, oh yeah. Now, now with with Russell out, who do you see coming off the bench to fill in that role? Uh, you had the three headed monster in Salui, uh, Bolido, <laughs> and Russell, yeah. who fills in that third slot. Yeah, I mean, right now, I think it's going to be up to. So we have a young guy named Stephen Afrifa, who's a forward. Young kid, another forward, uh, Vargas is his last name. Another good option. But the but here's the thing that feels strange, and that's why I'm kind of like, if it's a like for like, I don't think we have a like for like, really. Uh, and, and that's why I was talking to some uh, reporters that just cover Kansas City sports, and they were just like, it would be nice that if Peter goes, look, we're going to lose Johnny, let's switch up formation, or let's let's play a player maybe – set him back a little bit instead of playing a high you know a wing uh, or a winger or whatever and i don't know if that's gonna happen because if you guys don't know anything about peter vermees this guy does not like to change <laughs> he is uh he's old school in every way possible so most likely we're gonna see some type of replacement i don't know who's in like Kyrie shelton's another player like for a while that would always do this filler role when johnny was out Kyrie would come in uh and and we would just kind of hope and pray that he could do something or whatever uh, but look, I'm hoping I see like Steven come in or Vargas come in someone young. Cause that's like been the big complaint. Like for sporting world, we have a lot of old guys. We finally, and not saying this in a bad way, but like 
just this season we're starting the first time without Zusi uh, for, for I don't know for the first time in like 10 years 10 plus years that he's been in this club um so losing some of those players is nice because we get to have some of the young guys come in and we start to see like who do we actually have in our academy um but against you guys again bringing it back to Saturday I wish it, we were playing someone else other than the galaxy because I don't know what your guys' vibes are right now, even though it's it's three draws, right? Three draws. Um, I don't know if you guys are like, I'm, I'm worried about this player or that player, but your front, your attacking players are too scary right now for us. This, I, for at least the people I've been talking to, we're not we're not excited for, for your attackers. <laughs> well, well, Edgar, right now, what, what's the vibes? Edgar, what's the vibes? Let them know. <laughs> well, just... I told Matt the same thing. Uh, that was before their, uh, our match with St. Louis. I told him yeah. there's two different caps right now in, in the Galaxy Land. There's the people that are saying we're back. We're definitely back. This is it, boys. Yeah, get ready for you know the road trip to MLS Cup. We're back. Let's do this. Yeah. And then you have the other group that is looking at the results with a lot more scrutiny, and they're saying we're cautiously optimistic. And um, because, like I mentioned earlier, Galaxy's had a string where they're playing against opponents that have lost key players. St. Louis, yep. uh, Edo Leuven got hurt right before the game. Uh, Nashville was missing Walker Zimmerman. And yep. uh, Miami, I mean, they're, they're, they're coming off that hard game against RSL. Uh, and, oh, and let me mention also, Nashville had just come off that, that slugfest against Inter-Miami. And so... Uh, the one thing I keep asking for is that Galaxy finally get a chance to play against somebody, a quality opponent that uh, is at full strength because I want to see how capable this team really is. And we still haven't seen that. And hearing you say Johnny Russell's not going to be there, yeah. it, it, like it, it, get, it, it bugs me because uh, some people are going to say, well, why would you say that? You know, it, it works in our favor. No, I want to see us play yeah. against the best teams like the old wwe moniker to be the best gotta beat the best right yeah and i want to i want to play against the K S skc that's coming in all cylinders firing and so this is kind of this kind of bugs me uh, i was really looking really forward to seeing johnny russell again he's he's actually he's one of my favorite players in mls to to see yeah. uh, regardless of who he's playing for uh so it, that's kind of sucks but as far as uh, the galaxy vibe it's Actually, after this game against St. Louis, it went from cautiously optimistic to a little nervy uh -huh. because uh, at the end of the game, uh, uh, Caceres tackled uh, one of the St. Louis players in a very dramatic tackle. Yeah, it looked some something like something from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he got the red, and we're so paper thin at defense right now because Jalen Neal is still out. Yeah, that stepping up is. Uh, the Salvi yeah. King. Well, no, you know, the Brian's the Salvi King. This guy's the Salvi <laughs> Popper. The Salvi <laughs> Popper. Eric, you know, I bring zucchini casserole to the to the dinner party. Savaleta. Savaleta, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Savaleta is a, is a really strange fella because with the Salvadoran national team, he's like a freaking god, and mm -hmm. then you put him in a galaxy kit, and he's just like completely lost. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, the funny thing is, he scored a hat trick last year. How did that happen? I don't yeah. know. It was, it wow. was like boom, boom, boom. Three goals like in the second half, I think it was. Yeah. And so he's going to be on defense and with Maya Yoshida. And so I, I, I'm really worried if Kansas City is able to get in there and cause some chaos. They'll catch some on it that's head spinning and yeah. ah, damn it. Uh, well, what, do you agree, Brian? Well, this is where it gets interesting because we would have had deficiencies in the defense if Kansas City was the full strength. Um, now it's kind of like they miss one of their more prolific offensive players, and we're missing one of our crucial center defensive players. Uh, right. So it's, it's going to be a little give and take. My <laughs> my uh, worry here is that our forward, who is actually atop of the Golden Boot race right now, Dejan Jovalich with four goals, um, is going to let some goals go and not put him in back of the net. Like he, this last game against, um, this last game against St. Louis, he could have had three goals. 
the, what does that do to a psyche coming into a match where your undefeated streak is on the on the line, uh, and you're gonna have to be aware you're you're gonna have to be the one that's gonna have to put him back in the net. Can he provide more than one goal? And that's gonna be something for me to look out for. Another player that hasn't been shining the way we'd like him to, and it's not because he's a bad player. Um, he just tries to do too much. And one Ricky Pooj, these last four games. They haven't been like, oh, my God, get him off my team. But he tries to play hero ball and tries to do a little bit too much, um, a little bit too extra where he kind of compromises his team with turnovers that we get scored on. And so I don't want that to happen in a match where it seems to me from, from as of right now that these are points that we're able to get uh, away. Uh, so. I'm not sure how this LA Galaxy team is going to show up. Hopefully, Vanny has a plan because... And it seems he has had a plan. These last four games, they haven't been bad. Uh, like Kevin mentioned, the game against St. Louis and against Miami were actually very good. Uh, it's just the finishing product is not there. Uh, we need more of De Young and maybe... Hopefully, we get to see Gabriel Peck start in his match against Kansas City, who we haven't seen start, but we know what he could do in the 40 minutes that he's given. So we have a lot of um, plus side, and I think that's what kind of scares me because when everything seems like it should go our way, it does not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah, because that. of 10 years of paranoia. Yeah. <laughs> the 10 years of paranoia with Chris Klein and now, company. <laughs> uh, there's two th there's two things that he mentioned uh, that actually um, stories, like I guess, you know, that are like secondary stories going on with this club because – on the surface, right? I'm sure that from your point of view, you're like, wow, Alec Galaxy is undefeated after four games. Uh, Dejan Jovelich. By the way, that's how we pronounce his name correctly. It's Jovelich. Okay. Jovelich. Everybody before the season started. Yeah, no, he was <laughs> but, really mad about that too. <laughs> yeah, he's like, Jovelich. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Dejan, we'll call him Dejan. So Dejan, yeah. he, four goals, right? He started there with Suarez at the top of the goal scoring table. And so you're like, you know, Galaxy is doing great. Uh, but then you start looking a little bit closer. Like I said earlier, you start looking closer at all the different little aspects. And Jovalich has benefited from such great service this season. The way that Pinto and even Ricky Puj and Fagundes and and Sal and Salet, I'm sorry. And <laughs> um uh oh my god, uh, Marquis Delgado have been playing. They've been opening up uh, so many scoring opportunities for Dejan Jovalich. And he's missed so many opportunities on goals that should be easy to put in that Galaxy fans are like, what the hell is going on? What's wrong with this guy? And then he scores and you're like, oh, okay, everything's good. Right. But then you start looking back at all the goals that he missed and you're like, because then he would mention that in his last game, he could have had three goals. He could have had three goals against Nashville. He yeah. could have had three goals against Miami. And so you're like, Yeah. And one of the things that we notice about him is that he's been having confidence issues. His confidence has waxed and waned a lot over the past uh, 12 months, I would say, for sure. Uh, where a, a year ago, Chicharito was on the bench because he was injured, and they told Jovlich, damn, you're the man. Go out there and show us what you can do. And one goal after, like, what, 10 games or something like that? And you could see his his – confidence just started to dip and it got to the point where he's not the same person he was in 2022 it's a recurring theme of galaxy fans. you listen to any galaxy podcast they're probably going to say the same thing yep. you, you read anything about the galaxy they're going to say the same thing and so it's kind of like a redemption tour for him but it hasn't been as smooth as you would think because uh a metaphor that i've been using a lot it's like he's being served a full course dinner and he's just having appetizers or yeah. maybe just dessert because he just wants the tastiest ones right right and um so it, it, it kind of like you kind of wonder like okay what's he gonna do is he gonna really pop off or is he just gonna be meandering i mean because obviously if you had somebody a top level uh goal scorer this guy would be up ahead with like eight eight or nine goals right now god right. be flying um but, but this is the thing though He's getting mm -hmm. in positions to still score. And yeah. I know there's going to be a team in MLS that's going to lend themselves for Dayon to score more than one goal. Could it be this weekend, Kevin? 
Kadeon get a hat and... trick in at Children's Mercy Park? Look, I think look, we have a good. I think our keeper for the most part, as other than he made a maybe one mistake this year, but I don't know. We have experience in goal, which is nice. I like yeah, an older Timmy keeper. Is awesome. Uh, it's just like our defenders, especially like set pieces, any set piece, we're lost. And it's been like that for like years. Like last three seasons, Sporting was like, we were eating like some of the highest amount of goals via set pieces. So like if your guys, if Ricky Pooch is over here, taking these crazy free kicks and sending the ball in the box. I mean, if anyone's there, they're going to get to, if you have a guy that could head the ball, we're, we're screwed, you know? Um, and yeah, so tall attackers, we're going to have an issue. And we are still like coming off of injuries of players from last season in defense. We still have like guys that, I don't know. If, if you ask a sporting fan right now, if, if you just ask them like, Hey, what do you think about any of our center backs? Like, you're going to get like the, craziest takes because like you never know some games one of our guys looks like like he was playing in la masia playing in barcelona and the next game he could look like he has never played a professional match ever and he's making passes to the center of the box in danger instead of clearing it or just really goofy mistakes that if you have one guy that likes to be there at the right time he will eat us up that's that's honestly why I've, I'm super nervous of playing you guys. Like if I was playing a team that really didn't have anyone up top, you know, I'm like, all right, this might be another, a good opportunity for sporting to win. But I don't know today. Or I don't know today coming in tomorrow. I feel like, or tomorrow, Saturday, I feel like uh, I would hope for another draw <laughs> just to, just so I could be like, yeah, we're still undefeated and still undefeated at home. We got to win at home. But I mean, this is a huge chance for LA to get those three away points uh, I don't even think you guys are going to be satisfied because, again, it's sporting and we're missing a player. But you guys would be like, OK, we shook off some early nerves. Now we continue to focus on the next team, maybe a better offensive team or whatever. But I don't know. I I, I don't want to be like the Debbie Downer always with sporting. But like right now, it's like I'm trying to have fun watching. But really, if I don't know how you if you guys feel the same way, but like with sporting, like the last game we won and I was bored out of my mind. And I talked to guys who don't do watch alongs. They don't, I mean, they texted me and said, brother, I fell asleep or another one, <laughs> wow. a, an ex player. I'm not going to say his name was like, dude, unwatchable at, at points. And I'm like, I know, I, I mean, I know. And sometimes they text me cause they know I'm talking to people live while the games are happening, which makes the game fly. Like sometimes I'm watching the game like 25% of the time and I'm just reading chat or, you know, whatever. But if I had nobody to talk to and I'm just sitting here watching the games, they're so hard to watch. And it's so sounds so harsh, but like it's been so boring for so long that now I know I've been saying this since the beginning of the season, like nothing matters till September. But at right now, it doesn't feel like I should trip or really sporting fans should freak out because of last season. Uh, but look. If we could keep going and we're undefeated, guys, 10 weeks without a loss is a lot better than 10 weeks without a win and a handful of losses, you know? So I guess that's <laughs> progression from last year. And do you feel that uh, there's been a sense of complacency as far as having Peter Ramis in charge for so long yeah. that you're, you're just so used to things being a certain way and nobody is has like the, the courage to step up and say, hey, can we change things a bit? Yeah, I mean, he's or... the boss from everything. He's sporting director, coach. Yeah. He's in control of everything, and it's it's Peter Bernice's show, which is funny because, I mean, let me be careful. I think it's funny because sometimes, even though it's fully his show from top to bottom, it is the Peter Bernice show. Uh, when sporting does not play well, Peter Bernice is famous to like to blame others, maybe referees or whatever. Than, than himself which is kind of the annoyance for sporting fans for a while like he is a good coach he's won trophies he's done the thing but then at this point we're kind of like we're running on the same gear for so long and it's so like the product is boring and and i think even last this honestly maybe one of the reasons why sporting started revamping a little bit of the stadium they added like some lights and it, this pre-game stuff that we were just talking <laughs> you had it last time the stadium? <laughs> yeah, yeah i know it's shocking you know it's it's so crazy how like sporting was like one of the earlier teams and all this type of stuff in the u.s and now we've just been so far behind which we talked about last time but um yeah I, I think they're just trying to make things new but you can't change that much when 
sporting director coach is the same person it's been like that for 10 plus years nothing is going to change i mean if if something's going to change it's just players coming in and out but the system is the same so talking to people that have been in it like there's a, so many people at sporting that are like care and want to keep things new and fresh and exciting it's not like nobody cares but there's only like so much you could do until like the guy who's in charge will say hey nope or we're not going to go after these players i'm not going to sign that guy i'm going to hold off on this one i'm not going to do this then you're just kind of like all right i'm just gonna have to blame one guy then you know that's just you have to hey this guy almost managed Cristiano Ronaldo. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how well he would have managed that. I don't even know if that would have been a success, but yeah. it would have been amazing though. No, it would have been yeah. Man. Both yeah. of the mania would have been uh, it's such a thing that I hope we don't all like look back and go like Jesus, what a missed opportunity. Like yeah. having well, them both here at the same time. What we could have been? been what could have been? One in the east, one in the west. Come oh on. my god. The story would have been, been there. And honestly, it doesn't matter about sporting, but if he went to an LA team and like it just to have him here would have been legitimately amazing. The eyes on our league would have been I mean, now people are watching the Saudi league. Uh, so who the who cared about them 2 years ago? And, <laughs> yeah, <true>. and now <laughs> and, and just just from his poll. So imagine, we got double, we got both sides of the the evil empires coming together. It's it's crazy. Yeah. would have been yeah. i don't know there's still yeah. time guys you know, there's still time i don't know we'll see you never know. summer you never transfers know. baby summer transfers exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> the you had something thing, um yeah the other thing i was gonna mention was uh it's true about ricky push uh we've been saying it we said it a lot last year where he he carries the ball too much i think uh the one thing is he he tries to be the man he he's mentioned this multiple times before that he wants to be league mvp and we're getting to the point where you expect him to do these things where his teammates will be open or he could just take the easy pass and he doesn't because he wants to carry the ball and be the man, he'd be the hero, be, you know, be at the top of the highlights. And that's, that's good. I mean, if you have the experience to do that, he might have the skill, he might have the drive to do that, but experience comes with time and he's still pretty young. So, yeah. uh, but you know what's different from last year though? We have some wingers now. Yeah. True. And one, and I'll say this, and I want your reaction. Uh-huh. One, Uh-oh. Joseph Paintsill. What do you think about J- Joseph Paintsill so far? Oh, f- I, scary, dude. That that's again another reason to be scared. Uh, sad. I don't know. He's not injured, right? He's he's still. Oh okay, no, he's it, fresh, I, dude. So yeah, I mean, this guy is gonna be nasty, especially if. If Ricky can figure out life as a midfielder, especially with him, and we could see a good, like you guys said, maybe less of the ball, but he finds the right moments, bring that that Barca Academy out of him. I think you guys would be disgusting in the future. Mostly, I think your issues are more on the defensive side. I mean, sometimes I do watch a game where like Ricky is dominating and he's doing his thing and you need like you need a player to kind of control things, but it's a weird mix because then you have your wingers you know, making runs and then he's being a little too fancy and Ricky's holding off and he's holding off and he's trying to fight this player and he's trying to trying to make more space. It's like, hey, you had like three opportunities to send that ball and you finally have a guy with some crazy legs, you know, finds a goal. It, it, I He's got to be so dangerous. So like the hype is real. It's going to be crazy if you, especially I know we're early, but we get June. I mean, hopefully past League's Cup and all that. And like it's time to be focused on just the cup, and that guy is running a hundred percent with Ricky Puj. You guys are gonna be nasty, you know. We're gonna be talking about a different LA team now, MLS. <laughs> That'd be nice. Yeah, don't, right. Don't don't get my hopes up like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let, let's get to some um, win probabilities. Okay. Google has Sporting winning at home with the fifty percent chance. They have okay. the draw. And the LA Galaxy winning uh, at 25 and 25. The last three matches that the LA Galaxy and Sporting Kansas uh, faced off, they were all ties. Yes. And it will continue to <laughs> in two days, baby. Two days. <laughs> I think like if you guys score first, it'll be like tough. Okay, let's say LA scores first. Um, how good are you guys, you know, maintaining a lead for a majority of the, of the game? Probably not that good going off of the vibes. Same thing with sporting. Like you guys, if, if we score first, we've done it twice now that like the other team comes back 
um, in annoying fashion. So we suck at the mental, you know, mental game. But us together would be kind of hilarious. Either we're gonna have like a four four draw or like the ugliest nil nil ever. You know what I mean? Like it's gotta be in between there. <laughs> I mm, want to vote for the no, no. No, I want that four four. No, four, I want to see goals. Eight hey, goals, baby. Come <laughs> on, see some goals. <laughs> you want? You... Hey, bring your boy up to be the leader of the freaking league of in, in goals. You guys will, you guys will love it, and you guys will still yeah. be undefeated. Yeah, yeah. hear me out. <laughs> and uh, how do you think this match is gonna go? Knowing all the um, the stats and the somewhat facts of past <laughs> games. <laughs> Well, at the at the end of the St. Louis match, I was actually uh, walking back home to our hotel room, and I got all these tweets telling me, "Dear Lord, what has Martin Casares done? He got red carded." And I got home and I saw the how you getting here? He's flying across the the screen, and I was like, "Oh my God, who who's next in line? Eric Savaleta. Oh my God, we're gonna get cooked." Um, and so I was pretty not 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 pessimistic, but. I was just looking at this as, yes, it's probably going to be another draw, maybe a, a loss finally on the road. And then you told me about Johnny Russell going down, and all of a sudden, I feel a sense of hope. There we go. <laughs> I feel like, uh, you know, maybe uh, Savaleta won't mess up so bad in this game, and Ella hey. Galaxy will be able to pull one out. So I'm going to say, I'll be gentle. I'll say uh, three to two Galaxy. How's that? Okay. I'll take three it. to two Galaxy? All right. There. I'm probably gonna say uh two two. Um uh, the expected goals are two point five and over. So yeah, Smart. another draw. Yeah. So yeah, I'll do a two two draw. What Same. you got, Kevin? Same two two? I think look, I I for some reason have this vibe that sporting is gonna score first. All right, this is gonna be the stat. We will score first. We're gonna go through 60 minutes of pure nightmare. Ricky Pooch ball sending that freaking ball down the wing and just hoping when you guys are there and you guys are gonna tie it up. It's gonna be one one again. One one. Hopefully. Oof. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. I just don't want to lose. Like that's it. I don't want to lose at home. Cause then you know what's gonna happen. It's like everyone's gonna freak out again. All right. One one. Right. I'll take a There's point. Something about the about the Midwest and, and Galaxy where we've had draw three consecutive draws against St. Louis. Right. Three consecutive draws against Kansas City. It's about to be four, baby. It. It's about, about to be four. four. <laughs> Will it be worth watching? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be worth watching more than yeah. seeing these guys the, get bounced. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a reminder that the match is this Saturday, 5.30 p.m., Apple TV, yada, yada, yada. Get your uh, streaming stuff going on. All Woo! right. Well, thank you once again, Kevin, for having this conversation it wasn't as intense as last time no we're a lot more chill guys we're a lot but yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. because we haven't lost yet right no, exactly that's why we're... Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah no thank it... you for having me i love it yeah yeah of course and uh let the beautiful folks know where they can find you and maybe any live streams that you have upcoming that people might want to join yeah so this weekend i will be streaming it fits perfectly that i will be watching along sporting kansas city la galaxy on kevin show underscore tv twitch and YouTube, so wherever you wanted to watch. Uh, and then upcoming stuff, it's I after that I got an, I'm rotating NWSL and hopefully covering just goals and things that I like uh, throughout the week. And then we have TST, the amateur tournament this summer. So I'm like, I'm all ready to go, baby, ready. And and I'll tell you guys this too. Listen, and I'm gonna tell all my blue blood team fans that I've been, I'm gonna be talking to the next few weeks, and that's you guys. Um, we're, we're experienced veterans in this league, I would like to say. We all know we don't freak out too early, all right? So let's say sporting wins, not a big deal. LA wins, all right, not a big deal. We know that not, none of this will really matter till halfway through the season when everyone starts getting their signings, and then it gets crazy. So I know some of our friends, our new neighbors that we both have, like to jump the gun a little bit, say they're good, maybe think, freak out too early or whatever. But we're we're nice and calm, and that's why I like you guys. You know, nice and chill. We've been through pain. <laughs> yeah, Conscious definitely. <laughs> yeah, Edgar, exactly. Edgar, where can they find you? Uh, you guys can find me on on uh, Twitter and Instagram as Edgar Nags uh, Bright. And also, don't forget to go to nagtv.com to look at Edgar's article and rankings on the jerseys. Uh, you can find me as Bryant Nags on. X slash Twitter and on Instagram. 
Uh, well, that is it for us today. Thank you once again. This is the midweek show. And of course, per usual, and as always, keep on nagging.